afternoon, good morning, good evening to all of our listeners out in podcast land. I want to thank you for joining us again for another episode of Pointing North on the She Compass Show. This is Joe, and as always, I'm here with my co-captain, Helen. Hello. And we are wanting to, well, I am particularly excited about this topic um, because I think it speaks so much to my sister as well as some of the people who are close to me in my life. And this is a topic about emotional intelligence. As you know, uh, Helen has been very outspoken and is a proud dyslexic woman. Uh, With that comes challenges as well as amazing gifts. Uh, One of the things that we know scientifically about um, people who are dyslexic is that they tend to excel when it comes to entrepreneurship, uh, when it comes to creating lasting relationships, mentorship, anything of that nature that involves uh, this topic that we're going to talk about today called emotional intelligence. And I want to um, read one quick quote from an article in Forbes that really touched me because I think this speaks so much to Helen. You know, there's this um, this argument now that, well, in the past there was always an argument between whether or not um, uh, the uh, intelligence quotient versus emotional quotient, which one was more important in business. And of course, people have now discovered that the, the higher your emotional intelligence, the, the, the higher your uh, opportunity for success is. And this article really speaks to it. And I, I really like the quote that's that's here. So let me just read this to you really quickly. Emotional intelligence won't do a thing for you if you aren't genuine. A recent study from the Foster School of Business at the University of Washington found that people don't accept demonstrations of emotional intelligence at face value. They're too skeptical for that. They don't just want to see signs of emotional intelligence. They want to know that it's genuine, that your emotions are authentic. The same study found that sincere leaders are far more effective at motivating people because they inspire trust and admiration through their actions, not just their words. Many leaders say that authenticity is important to them, but the genuine leaders walk their talk every day. And the reason I love that quote, Helen, as you know, that is, I, I, don't, I think that's yeah. one of the best descriptions of you that I've ever read in print. Well, yeah, Here, here's the thing. And I always say, you know, they, they have an old uh, saying saying, fake it till you make it. And I always say, faking it till you make it, it I think people have took that in the wrong contents, right? I'm saying that right. Um, context, I think you mean. Context, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because what's happening with people is they're, finding about the fake it till you make it thing and i this is what i always say you have to be real from the beginning people can see through the fakeness of people when you're really a person who's passionate and cares about something or you care you say you or, care about some person and then when they actually right. reach out to you you turn your back on right them. or you say you care about a certain topic and then someone comes up to, to you to talk about that topic and you tell them go away i'm on the phone so who you are is always going to come through. And this, this is what I'm trying to tell people. You cannot fake who you are. And I learned a long time ago from all my friends that went to college and all my uh, friends around me that had these big degrees that they weren't doing anything with them. I dropped out of school in eighth grade because school wasn't for me. I knew it wasn't for me because... I wasn't learning anything and no one was willing to teach me uh, what I wasn't learning because they didn't have the patience. They didn't understand what dyslexia was at the time. And so back in my day, it was either you knew it or you didn't. If you didn't know it, get out of my classroom, you're a dummy. So I wasn't going to be called a dummy when I knew that in the eighth grade, I was navigating my life through things that no eighth grader could navigate their life through. So I knew it wasn't a dummy, but I wasn't be wasn't willing to waste the time to be called that and that was all I was going to get. So I did feel inferior to people who went to college and people who because I felt as though um, I didn't have those opportunities because of the way my brain worked. But once I found out my gifts in the way my brain worked and that's why I tell you people please do the hard work. Do the hard work on yourself. Find out who you are to the core not just not just the surface the core of you is going to be very important. We'll be right back. Love the She Compass Show? Then help us become a winner at the 14th Annual People's Choice Podcast Awards. Your nomination can help us keep doing what we love, encouraging women to rise to their highest potential and celebrating the bonds of sisterhood. 
Registration for the People's Choice Podcast Awards begins July 1st, 2019 at www.podcastawards.com. Simply register, then submit your nomination for the She Compass Show. Thank you for your support. We're excited to announce Helen's latest speaking engagement. Helen will join the ladies of Believe, Inspire, Grow in Chatham Township, New Jersey on Friday, August 9th, 2019 at 10 a.m. for an inspiring talk on how she overcame the challenges of severe dyslexia and dysgraphia, poverty, teenage pregnancy, and the loss of her hair as a child to become a successful business owner and author of the three-time award-winning book, Finding Our She Compass, 15 Life Lessons for Women Voyaging Toward Restoration, Reconstruction, and Renewal. Helen has been empowering women through word and action for years and is the recipient of multiple awards for her dedication to improving the lives of women everywhere. Our podcast, The She Compass Show, is based on that book premise of using life lessons on the path to self-discovery. Please join us for a great day of conversation, fellowship, and encouragement. For more details on the event and to learn how to become a member of Believe, Inspire, Grow, also known as B.I.G., contact Kathy Maloney at cmaloney1 at verizon.net. That's C-M-A-L-O-N-E-Y, the number one, at verizon.net. You can also visit the website at believeinspiregrow.com. And we'll also have links to the contact information and website for Believe, Inspire, Grow in our show notes for this episode. We look forward to seeing you there. Join Helen on the Dyslexia Quest, a podcast featuring interviews with the leading experts in the field of intelligence, learning, flourishing, and neurodiversity, as well as profiling uber-successful dyslexics to share their story and wisdom. Helen's show opened Dyslexia Quest's new season, and she's looking forward to talking to you about her own battle with dyslexia. On Helen's appearance, the host writes, quote, Helen Owens blew me away. She is one of the most powerful guests I've ever had. She holds presence, confidence, and an inner sense of radiance. If you are looking for an inspiring story that will have you connected to your innate power, your capacity to create, that will have you inspired about human potential, this is your episode. I have a feeling this is going to be one of our all-time listener favorites, end quote. You don't want to miss this show, and you can help support this podcast that shines a light on neurodiversity. We'll have a link to this show ready for you in the show notes. Now, back to the show. It's going to be very important for you to find out who exactly who you are so that you're successful. I know so many successful people in different ways. And what I mean by different ways, I mean different levels of education, um, different levels of um, mindset. Just as I had to work on the things that I'm lacking, they have to work on the things that they're lacking. And they're finding out that education is not only the thing that you you, you get a certificate and that means you can just go do it. Barbara Cochran agrees with you. Um, if anyone who's ever seen Barbara Cochran's Twitter feed knows that she is really, really big on supporting people who have uh, what I want to call maybe non-traditional learners. She was a non-traditional learner. She struggled all the way through school and you and, and continually supports that experience as the reason why she's successful today. And if, for those of you who may not be familiar with her, she's one of the sharks on Shark Tank um, and has been on, on for several episodes and, and constantly is, is celebrating the neurodiversity of folks that are, use their skills in different ways. And the thing that she celebrates the most is the ability to think outside the box, the ability to think quickly on your feet, to make decisions that, that not only empower the business, but empower other people and make other people want to be around you. That's one of the skills that you naturally possess, Helen. And, and again, research shows that, that, that folks who have that neurodiversity, particular dysle- particularly dyslexics, have that ability to really be able to connect with other people. And just as you said, those that, you know, if, if that's not an, an, a, a trait that's natural to you, you can certainly work on it by emulating those around you who have that skill because you know it's not something that was celebrated when we were kids i i remember as a child the 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 incredible focus on um 
IQ. And that, that was what determined whether or not you were going to be a success in life. Everybody looked at your test right. scores. They looked at, at your ability to right. adapt to traditional teaching methods. And, you know, it was just all about your grades. And it just it never, it always was something in the back of my head. I, I was a good student, but I always felt detached. Like I had so much more to offer than just these good grades. I had, I had performance capability. I had the desire to want to connect. Yeah. And, and I just, it, those things were not celebrated. And it's nice to see those things recognized in the career space now. Well, not everybody is an analytical thinker. And so the thing about it is, is that when you are looking at something in, in a whole, when everybody's taught that if you don't go to college, not just high school, if you don't, high school is finishing one thing, but they're saying that you need so much more now. You need college and and, and degrees and 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 all these things when you're the person standing in the background and your ears are open you're thinking to yourself boy I'm a failure before I even hit the gate and that's why I always tell people we all learn differently we all have different skills and for those that are still kind of trying to help get definitions of what emotional intelligence is this is now this is the opposite of I should say, this is going to tell you what emotional intelligence is from the okay. opposite point of view. This is from Business Insider, mm -hmm. and they have an article that talks about, they said there's seven indicators that show a person's low emotional intelligence. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to read the entire article to you, but I will give you just a couple of the tips that they offered. Um, one of the things that they said was that they automatically, you know, assume the worst in people. They, you know, they, they most, I'll, I'll read this here. We make most of our decisions with incomplete information, which means we have to make assumptions to close the gap. Uh, other, these folks that are automatically assuming the worst wind up projecting the worst tendencies of their own nature on other people. Another thing that they do is that they just make blanket assumptions. They automatically assume, assume that their experiences are typical and that therefore they can extrapolate to fill in the gaps of what other people have gone through. So these are people, uh, what they're saying is, is that these are people that are so disconnected from the world around them. They sort of have this tunnel vision of what they need to do. They're, they're very, as Helen used, I love that word, very highly analytical, but so analytical that they're kind of in their own box and they have created a space to sort of see the world through. And I think it's really important to come out of that box, um, re referencing back to my experience as a kid, where everything focused on the grades and whether or not you understood the material. It's so important to come out of that box and recognize that there are so many different ways of seeing things. You know, on top of the fact that it's just, a, a, the world is a much more colorful and exciting place to be when we appreciate the way that, that other people see things and know that there's value in all of those opinions. We all have different skills and sometimes not all of them, what's the word, preclude to education? Uh, preclude, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that, to, mm, to, look at you with your big words, well, go ahead. Well, you know, I gotta do something. <laughs> Something. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, to a, to a higher education. It's just like the words that I use. I get a lot of my words from you, a lot of my words from my friends who went to college. They teach me something all the time. Because mm -hmm. if I hear a word and I say, what does that stand for? Or sometime I automatically know, because I've heard it so many times, but I need to really figure out how to use it. So the thing of it all, it's all beautiful. It's all colorful. We can all teach one another something. Someone who went to Yale or, or Stanford or, or um, Harvard can teach us something too, but we can also teach them something. It's like respecting the person who cleans your house, okay? There's an art to that. I, I cleaned houses when I was a, as a girl. And when I look at it, it has to be done like a white glove, like almost like you went to the military. You need to clean that. Someone who works on your car, you need a good mechanic to work on your car to keep it going. So you need to respect those those type of jobs that people have. Even if people pick up your garbage, okay? Because you don't pick up your own garbage. Someone has to pick that up. So who's doing your yard work? Someone makes that look beautiful. But I would say be open to learn. You have to be smart in every facet of your life so that you don't get taken advantage of or take advantage of other people. And that's really a good point. And I and you know when you said that about the housekeeping, the the vision of the passage that we wrote in the book, if you haven't read or picked up a copy yet of Finding Our She Compass, we encourage you to do so. There's so many life lessons in it. And one of those lessons, uh, Helen talks about, at literally describes in detail her experience with the impact that she made on her clients. It, it, and, and I won't, you know, read 
read the entire chapter to you, but I will say that her whole premise was everybody expected that when I came into the house, they were going to get, quote, a maid, unquote. What they ended up with was a person who helped them clean their spirit, a person who helped them clean their space along with their soul, Mm -hmm. a person who elevated their homes from dirty to spectacular and also elevated their hearts from unsure to comfortable right. and, the, and this is this is this is the validity this is the power of emotional intelligence and that's why it's so important that we celebrate it and that we elevate it because it is the thing that allows us to create those lasting relationships and I can tell you this from my own experience I don't remember the grades I got when I was in school but I remember the relationships that I made I remember the impact I made on other people because they told me they let me know right. how important I was to them and what I was able to move in their life that stayed with me those are the things that matter well you know it's just like with my clients they say you know Helen I I love you and you love me because it becomes a relationship the relationship to hair loss is very devastating for people so if I was just a a woman when I had no emotional equation um, come in get your hair done get out bye see it looks good people are looking for so much more they're looking for someone they can rely on someone they can depend on someone who they can tell their secrets to and tell that person how they got there. How did I get to the point where I'm pulling my hair? Or how did I get to the point where I have alopecia? And what emotional toll that took on me? And they're looking for you to listen and to help and to guide. So when you say, you know, I'm the CEO of something, people are looking for you not just to run the business. They're looking for you to spend time with their family with them for Christmas. You know, don't just sit in a big chair and say, this is who I am. And I look down on all the little rats that help me. The article says, and I'll jump right in here when you, cause you're saying it right on time. The one we were just reading about, about the toxic behaviors of people without um, emotional intelligence says just what you just said. They turn conversations toward themselves and they speak more often than they listen yeah. because you're not interested in, in communicating or, I, or connecting. Hey, the best information I get and trust me, it is a challenge for a dyslexic to be quiet. Sometimes I'm just itching in my seat because I just want to say what I need to say. But I always want to say what I need to say out of kindness and out of educating someone. But you have to listen to people to get the value of where you're coming from because sometimes what you're thinking or what you're doing may not always be right. And if you can get the value from someone else, that's worth more than billions of dollars because you can give that back. And so when you come off that big chair and they say, oh, uh, CEO, blah, blah, blah. He has barbecues with us every year. Those are the things I remember. He was nice to my daughter. He said something so kind to my son. He gave him some information. So when you close that office door, just know when you're sitting at the top, the people that are working under you are not beneath you. They're working under you. There's a reason why we have you do all of the face-to-face interviews on the She Compass show because there is an authenticity that people recognize about you. And just like the New York Times article was saying, you know, as soon as you get on board with them face to face, they can see that that you genuinely believe in them. One thing I've noticed oh, yeah. with all of those those interviews is every, you know, everybody has the same thing. Oh, Helen, you ask these great questions. Oh, what a great question! Because you can feel that they're connected to the fact that you're connected to them. Right. Some of those women you've just met, I, and when yeah. you do those interviews, you think that you've known them, you know, a hundred years because you're so connected to what they they're interested in yeah, saying. Yeah, because I try to go to the heart of the soul of the matter, not just the surface. Because like I tell people, there are layers that people have and they don't want you sometimes to peel them back but when you peel those layers back and and this has come from I would like to say the worst of what people think about people they find the best of who you are but we're not all willing to give of ourselves and we have to realize it's a it's an obligation and it's an honor to sit in a big chair but it is also your duty to show other people how to manage that position, how to show that you are appreciative of that position. And that's the people who are working under you, not beneath you. They're not beneath you. They are your equal in every way. But you have to show that you're willing to come down to the point where you let them know that you feel an equal and not above them. Because it's just a position. It's not, it's not, it's not life changing unless you change people's lives for the better. Helen, you are absolutely right. In fact, I want to just add this quick 
note here from Business Insider to back up what you were saying about trying to reach people and make them better. Uh, this One of the quotes that they have to say about people with low emotional intelligence says, people who have low emotional intelligence can manifest it by being domineering, but they can also do it by being completely passive. Trying to keep an awkward conversation going either out of politeness or social convention, or maybe because you have to professionally. Regardless, if the people you're supposedly having a conversation with practically need to treat you like a hostile witness to get you to engage, it could be a sign that you need to do some work on your emotional intelligence. And that's exactly what you're saying. You know, you, when you're sitting in these, like you said, I'm going to quote you, big chairs, and you kind of look down, if you feel like what you're doing is needing to look down on others and, and, and tell them to comply with you, rather than feeling like you're a part of a team and you work in and collectively with people. People, then maybe it is time to take a look inside and see what you what you're contributing and if there's something better that you need to be doing right or get yourself a good dyslexic and talk to them <laughs> yes <laughs> and, I and, highly agree and, with that and, advice. And, and then when you find out that they're sitting in big chairs as well and they don't have maybe the same education that you do or maybe they do and you know they they can't read this document or read that document i'll tell you like my sister told me it changed my life anybody can read a document to you um but the things that you're doing can't there's not a lot of people who can do that so i would say that no matter what humble yourself no matter what your education is no matter uh never think you're better than anybody else never think you're above anybody else and that's a good practice in itself i don't feel like i'm any better than anybody else we some of us might make more than others but it doesn't make us better than anybody i can't tell you how many people meet me and, and say god you're down to earth you would um i was i'll give you an example i was i was visiting my uncle um a couple of days ago and he's in a nursing facility and um there was a lady that say, said to me, you come here all the time, you hug everybody, you talk to everybody. And she said, and when we found out who you were, you don't have to talk to any of us. I said, hold it. <laughs> I said, let's, let's back up. I'm just like you. I have a job and I do that job. There's some kind of problem with you right now for saying that because you're just you're you're human just like me so i want you you as a person to never say that about yourself or anybody else because yes me hugging you guys kissing you guys showing you guys um i appreciate the way you're taking care of my uncle um is something that everybody should do no matter what chair they sit in or no matter what you think of them because you found out something about them always know that you're better than that she said to me, she hugged me and said, you know what, thank you, because you're right, that is my problem and not yours. So you have to, you have to learn what, what you stand for to know what you can give back to the world and know that never let anybody treat you beneath them. And this, this is coming from an African-American dyslexic woman saying this, that I feel like I'm equal to anybody. I don't feel less than anybody. And if you can motivate yourself if you have to tell yourself that 20 times a day it will it will sink in and and I, I would like to say too for the people with higher educations I take my hat off to you um, God gifted you with something share to share with the world but not to make the world a scene beneath you and that is a that is a arrogance problem it's it's a it's a problem that if enough people tell you that then you believe it and you can be great, but you can be greater when you communicate well with people, love on people legitimately, and step down. Step down. Take your shoes off. You know, be like Richard Gere in Pretty Woman. Take your shoes off in the park and just kick back. You can have your education, but love on other people and just, you can still run the world. And you can do it in a way that's, I love that advice. You can do it in a way that's kind and, and connective and, and embracing of other people. There, you know, this is a, a household of many different minds. Oh, of, yeah. of the way we, we all have different, both of us have different ideas. We have different minds. We have different emotions. Oh, yeah. And we embrace all of it and we love it because it's the reason why we're and being I'm, able to do what we can and do. And I'm so happy that you took your little bad butt to Santa Clara. <laughs> 
<laughs> and got that, got, edu- something got that education girl and got those certificates because I could not get the help I mm, need if you didn't have it. That's true. So I look, hey, I'm looking up to you, but I'm never going to look down on you just because you, you don't have something. But I'm always going to look up to you no matter what that is, because I, like I said, everybody adds to the greatness of somebody else. And when you just lock everything down, you're locking down your best potential. Everybody does add to the greatness of everyone else. And and equally as important, Helen, what you just said, you add to your own greatness. And when you identify and recognize what your own gifts are, you can you can soar. And I want to thank all of our lovely ladies and gentlemen who have joined us again for another episode of Pointing North on the She Compass Show. We love having you here. We love these conversations. We love knowing that we're making an impact in your world. And I want to tell you a couple of things before we go. First of all, we mentioned the book, Finding Our She Compass. It is now, I believe, a five-time award winner. I'm trying to count all the awards that we've gotten. We're pretty proud of them. So uh, we just recently won another uh, literary award, another book award. Board, and would love to have you take part in some of the stories and life lessons that we share in the book. So if you have not gotten your copy yet, again, it's called Finding Our She Compass, 15 Life Lessons for Women Voyaging Toward Restoration, Reconstruction, and Renewal. And it is available on Amazon. Also, we are, as you have heard probably in the ads here, if you if you checked a little bit of the ad here, you know that we are working on the 14th Annual Podcast Awards. Uh, we have uh, would love to have your nomination in the Society uh, section and would love to have you support us if this is something that, that you believe in and you support what we're doing we would love to have your support and as always you can find us on social media if you have comments or feedback we are on uh, Twitter at she Compass, on Instagram at shecompass.com and also on Facebook at she Compass. so we thank you again for joining us and we are so happy that you are here and we hope that you will join us for another soon another episode here coming up very soon have a wonderful day